Tonight's game is something a little more nebulous we've done in the past. It's called uh, Games for Smart People. And what I mean by Games for Smart People is that it's that's the generic term for a, a series of streams that we've done where we go to websites like Khan Academy, uh, and in this case, Brilliant.org, and um, th these are websites that, that, s that sell themselves on their educational aspects. We're going to do the problems of the week. And most people's problems of the week are like, I got to pay my credit card bill. And I need to remember to take out the recyclables on Wednesday and the trash on Thursday. In this case on Brilliant.org, problem of the week means if you have a, a hypercube in the fifth dimension... How fucked are you? <laughs> and we're gonna check out the basic, basic difficulty problems of the week. And I, you guys can see my, yeah, you guys can see my mouse. So for the week of December 3rd, let's kick it off. First problem, a container with different sized nuts, including large Brazil nuts, cashews and peanuts. Those are not nuts, though, but okay. Is packaged at a factory. When the nuts are first packaged, they are evenly distributed. What will happen to the container of nuts over time if it is shaken? Pixel Hat Pros already with the correct answer. That's a lot of nuts! I get that reference. I've seen Kung Pao. I wrote a... I, when I was in high school, I was like 10th grade. I wrote an entire essay over why Kung Pao Enter the Fist was the best movie ever made. And as part of the presentation, we had to show up to 60 seconds of the movie to demonstrate why we felt that way. So I showed the opening where the where the chosen one fights off Betty and then falls down the side of a mountain and then the the, the poor woman carrying water k picks up the baby and goes, "Oh, so cute." And then just fucking rolls him rolls him down the hill again. My teacher was fucking mortified. Sheep says nuts are the same as Lego bricks. The largest ones will be on the top. See, I think looking at the answers, the nuts will stay evenly mixed. That's probably not going to happen. It's the, the, the largest nuts are either going to be on the top or the smallest nuts are going to be on the top. And one thing, one thing I know. Now, again, we're exercising. We're thinking logically here. Brilliant.org is all about house, being smarty pants. Knowing what I know about my experiences as a gay man, the answer is that the largest nuts are always going to be on top. You know what I'm saying? See? Look at that! Got to think logically. Think probabilistically. Whatever they fucking kept saying. Yeah, we got a one-day streak. <laughs> we, we leveled up down here. Classical mechanics level one. The, the the classical mechanics of gay sex. <laughs> At first, I thought this question was asking what what side do you put the toilet paper on. I thought I was like, what the fuck? Okay, you yank on the end of the toilet paper roll fast enough to tear off a small length. Roll A has more paper on it than roll B. In which case is it easier to do this? So you just. You just yank it, and it's asking which one rips first. My gut's telling me A. My gut's telling me A because it's... There's more weight on the roll. It has to do, it has to do more work. Okay, shit. Now, chat, you guys are saying both. <laughs> Pixel hat, why not both? Uh, you guys are... Hang on, hang on, hang on. I got it. Watch. Watch, 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 watch. Okay, let's make this one even. Okay. That's going to look like I'm in high school again with all this toilet paper on the floor. <laughs> okay, okay. We're going to try it. Okay, that didn't rip. And now this, we'll try the we'll try the new the new roll. That one did rip. So it's A is Ah, see, we did it. Now, now, now I gotta roll. I gotta roll this one back up, or I could just throw it in someone's house that I fucking hate. If I flip a fair coin, oh god damn it, we're back to this. If I flip a fair coin two times, the probability of obtaining one head and one tail in any order is fifty percent. Okay, the math checks out. If I flip the coin four times, 
is the probability of obtaining two heads and two tails in any order 50% as well? I want to say I want to say yes because you're, you're just yeah it's fifty it's this is gonna be one of those fucking bullshit trick questions though man because they want you to say it's yes it's fifty I almost want to say I almost want to say it's less because there was a question there was a question la on the last games for smart people where it's like if you flip it there's something like the outcome. Is, is the outcome of flipping... Okay, you flip a coin three times. Is the outcome of getting heads twice the same as if you flip it 20, 33 times and get it 22 times? Like, proportionally, it's the same. It's, it's, it's two-thirds of the outcome. But they it's, they it's fucky. The math is fucky. So I'm, it's smaller. Aha! Fucking coins. is an astronaut stuntman an astro an astronaut stuntman is on a unicycle outside of a space shuttle in Earth's orbit. That is a hell It's a hell of a hypothetical, brilliant. No one's ever done this before. He jumps from the space shuttle, and as he is falling in space, he starts pedaling. What will happen next? You don't You don't fall in space I mean I okay is he get is he getting is he getting sucked in by the earth's gravitational pull because I feel like you don't fall in space you you just just kind of go in like a direction so if, if he jumps off the wing he's gonna be like he's just gonna keep going he's not gonna okay so the, the options are the astronaut will spin in the same direction as that of the wheel He'll spin opposite of the wheel. He'll keep falling without spinning. Does the wheel move? You get Dr. Surgeon guy. I kind of want this as a movie, though. <laughs> it's saying he's in a vacuum. He goes the opposite way as the wheel. But does the wheel spin? Is... Okay, this is this is a hell of a question. This is a, this is a big think right here. When he pedals... Does the wheel turn, or is the wheel stationary, and he's the one who moves? These are some... <laughs> Buster Keaton rules hypothesizes, and this is the scientific thing. He is hypothesizing here. He shouldn't be able to pedal fast enough for the wheel to influence his mass. <sighs> okay. Sheep says they both turn in a vacuum. So he's going to... Okay, so I, I would imagine... Okay, they're in a vacuum, so every force has an equal and opposite reaction. Ergo, I would I would tend to believe that he would spin... The wheel's going this way, he's going this way. So he, you know, wax on, wax off. <laughs> One out of two people are going to get this question wrong. Meanwhile, meanwhile, you guys... We're four for four right now. Let's see if we can take... Let's see if we can take this one home. Not looking good. Not looking good. Suppose you interconnect six nodes such that every node has an edge going to all the other nodes. Each edge is colored either red or blue, at random. Call a complete triangle, one formed by three nodes where all the edges are the same color. Will there always be at least two complete triangles? Can I phone a friend? Can I, can I get a hint? Don't fuck me on this brilliant. We're about to get five out of five correct. We were we were we were doing so good. I mean we got okay. Let's be real here. We got a coin flip chance of getting it, of getting it right or wrong. Let's let's inject some positivity into this stream. Let's say you know what, you can do it. You can if you believe in yourself hard enough. You can make two fucking triangles inside of a hexagon using some, oh fuck it. Who cares? Yes! I don't see how 79% of people got that one right when if we double back to like... Oh, that one was a, a shitty question. If we double back to the coin flip one, less people got the coin flip one right than the question where you literally have... Uh, wait, no. No, okay, no, wait, no. More, more people got... Fuck, oh man, we're not doing good on math. I should have done a proof for this. I don't know how to write a proof. I don't go by proof, okay? I go by, I go by my gut feeling. 
If the triangle don't fit, you must acquit, okay? Okay. Intermediate. If Earth somehow contracted to one-eighth of its current volume instantly through some magical internal forces... <laughs> uh, magic is not... No, there's no magic in science, okay? While keeping its shape and mass, how long would a day be? This is like the type of question that a kid would ask Bill Cosby on Kids Say the Darnest Things. The amount of hours in one day is going to change because the correct answer cannot be 24 because that's not a selectable answer. That's again, so we have already, thinking logically, we have already removed one of the answers that was not even provided to us. It's a start. I mean, I'm just, I was just going to divide 24 by 8. But that would give you, that would give you 3. Which is also not a selectable answer, so we <laughs> we know that the day is not going to be unchanged, and we know it's also not going to immediately shorten to twelve and a half percent of the current length of the day. So, uh, okay. So wait, sheep says times two because of the radius. Oh fuck, this is like a, a, a geometry question. Okay. So twenty. Hang on, I don't. Okay, are you saying 24 hours is the cir is that's the circumference, that's the equator? So that just has an arbitrary length of 24 cuz the hours divided by 8 cuz you're shrinking it by 8 and then you multiply it by 2 because of the radius. Sheep, I'm going to go with you on this one. Okay, <laughs> only 30% of people got that one right. All right. Oh no, this is not. This doesn't look good. Three unit circles are drawn tangent to each other, with all their centers lying on line segment. Is that a? Is that an? It's not like a. Is it an O? Yeah, it's an O. It's like a, it's like an italicized O. O E. From O, line segment O D is drawn such that it's tangent to the rightmost circle. If the length of the chord A B is A over B where A and B are co-prime positive integers, then what is A plus B? No, I did not create this problem. I simply solved it and decided to post it on here. Credit goes to my math teacher. Okay, Bland Morrison. You didn't even write this. You, fuck you. You know what? I did, this motherfucker right here. Okay, you want to talk about thinking logically. You want to talk about logical thinking. I did not create this problem. I simply solved it and decided to post it on here. Credit goes to my math teacher. I don't... Okay, let's, let's, do, let's do some highlighting here. I don't believe the highlighted part. I think this dude's trying to get free help with his math homework. And uh, you know, I ain't going to help him with it. So I'm going to take one for the team here. I'm going to say the length is zero. I'm going to repeat. I think I'm pretty sure it's zero. Oh, I, okay. I forgot it checks for that. That's oh, the correct answer is 13. You didn't even give me any numbers. After paying for a newspaper with four quarters, the newspaper came out. Well, congratulations on coming out, newspaper. But to my surprise, my four quarters also came back out because the machine was broken. Well then, buddy, you got yourself a free paper. No math is required on that one. None. After spending over a quarter of an hour at the machine, I paid for a newspaper in every possible way. How many newspapers did I end up with? Only four kinds of quarters can be, coins can be used. Pennies, nickels, dimes, and quarters. The order of the coins placed in the machine does not matter. Oh, this is another question by Blan. So he's trying to get more free homework help. All I need to know is that this guy spent spent over a quarter of an hour at the machine. So he was there for a little over... Okay, lo, let's think logically here. Quarter of an hour. That's 15 minutes. He was only there... He was only there for a little more than 15 minutes. So let me, let's, let's try something. Let's try something. Hang on. We got this dumb motherfucker named Blam... Standing at a newspaper machine. He's got a sack of fucking change like this. Okay. And he's there for a little more than 15 minutes. So let's take a look. Let's get let's get four quarters out. Let's get four quarters out. Let's get my phone. Let's get my phone. And let's open the stopwatch on this. So we're gonna we're gonna time we're gonna take a look here. Okay, stopwatch. Boom. We're gonna put 
four coins in this machine, in a fake machine. I'm going to tell you how long it takes me to do that. Okay, we're at the machine. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, it's one. It's two. It's three. It's four. Then you got to pull the thing, open it up. Take the newspaper out. Ka-ching, ka-ching. Realize that the coins fell out. Pick your coins back up. That took me 21 seconds. So, thinking probabilistically, let's do some math on the big computer over here. Let's put this laptop through the ropes here. If he's there, let's just say he's there for 17 minutes. Multiply that times 60 seconds. He's there for 1,020 seconds. If it takes me approximately 21 seconds to put four coins in a machine let's say he's gonna put more coins in uh, uh, newspaper machines don't take pennies so you're not fooling me bland so nickels dimes and quarters you're, you're putting those in the machine so uh, 21 seconds How, what's the most it can take the most coins you can put in there is 20 is 20 nickels so I put in four so you multiply that by, by five Okay, so hang on. 20 seconds times 5, because we put in 4 quarters to make it 20 nickels. That makes it 100, no. That makes it 100 seconds. So 100 seconds plus 20 seconds divided by 2, find the average, is 60 seconds. If he's at the machine for 17 minutes, 60 seconds is 1 minute. If he's at the machine for 17 minutes approximately, and he buys one paper a minute, because that's the average length it takes to put all the coins in the machine... He's bought 17 newspapers. God damn it, I knew that wasn't going to be correct. The three little pigs have recently established their own construction company. Are you, these motherfuckers, I would not live in a house built by any of these assholes because don't they all get blown down in the end or the first two get blown down and they fucking die? I only want the pig who built the brick house building my house. Their new client is the wolf who is now a real estate entrepreneur. I thought we were done reading bad fanfics exactly two pigs work on the house each day so that the other pig can call for help if something happens each pig must have at least one day off during this working period if the job is done before the end of the last day the wolf is still charged a full day rate for that day under the three pigs conditions what is the least amount of money in dollars the wolf can invest to complete this project I really, I think, I feel like the wolf should go with a different contracting company because this is exactly the type of situation that somebody concocts to fuck someone over. If you're trying to build a house, like this isn't like some fucking HGTV flip it, flip it, flop it, love it or list it bullshit show. If you're trying to get a house built and you have these three motherfuckers telling you that I'll work for 350 bucks a day, but I'm only going to work for nine days. And you have some other assholes saying, well, I'll work for 16 days, but you only have to pay me $150. They're trying, they're trying to fuck you. They're trying to pull the wool over your eyes, so to speak. And they're just trying to rip you off. So, go and buy street smarts. Not book smarts. Not this, not this bullshit. Go and buy street smarts. What you do is you don't, is you don't hire the pigs. You just go down to the Home Depot and hire some Mexicans. Because you can pay them way less than the federal minimum and you don't you don't have to keep track of that okay let's take the prices right approach and just say one dollar close without going over okay it doesn't operate on that it should have operated on that if i put on if there was 2900 and i put in one that should have been accepted as an answer if if bob barker was asking me this question i would just fucking come on down right now and play some plinko i'm forgot my drink i'm gonna get that Okay, it's time to go to the next next question. Oh fuck! I don't even like the way this one looks. Okay, it's gonna be it's gonna be slightly over nine thousand. That's gonna be correct. Oh, the correct. <laughs> if I only took the zeros out, that would have been correct. Somehow, the closest I got was by giving him a meme, by giving a meme answer. I mean, <laughs> we got any of them? Did we get any of them right? Let's go to the advanced section here. I want to partition the set of positive integers. One, to just every fucking number, past zero on the number line, into subsets that each subset satisfies the property that if a number X is in it, 2X is not. What is the minimum possible number of subsets that I can get? Hang on, I gotta reread this question again. 
is it two? Because you're only looking at if you're if you're only looking at x and two x. Well, let's say that x is is ten. So that just means you don't want to have twenty in there. So you have two sets of integers. You have one set that just has every single fucking number under the planet, and then you just have the same set, but just my, just with one less number in it. How the fuck did I get that right? This is on the end. <laughs> no day day. Street smarts, my man. Street smarts, okay. Don't worry about don't worry about this book learning stuff. I ain't too good at that. Next question. You and some friends would like to explore a labyrinth from its entrance to its exit. One of us this this hypothetical is gonna get is gonna end with one of us getting fucked by a minotaur, isn't it? The labyrinth only has one entrance point and one exit point. I believe that is the definition of a labyrinth. Thank you. The labyrinth is located on an infinite square grid. You can only travel in the cardinal directions that the labyrinth is infinite in size, but the shortest path from the entrance to the exit is finite. No? No, if it's infinite, you can't get out. It doesn't matter, because... Okay, hang on. You have a communication system that allows one to communicate to the others that the exit has been found, but allows another communication. So, you just text them when you get out, and that's it? What the fuck does that even mean? What is the minimum number of people that need to enter the labyrinth for there to be a strategy to guarantee that all can come out at the exit in a finite amount of time? Okay, now Day, Day is exercising street smarts here, saying always go right. Just put your hand on the wall on the right and just never let go of it. And you will eventually reach the exit. This is, this is demonstrably true. So I feel like he is correct in saying just, just one person needs to get out and just go right. Duh. But the thing that's throwing me off is that it's like this is an infinitely large labyrinth. Which suggests that you can't get out. But somebody has to because zero or whatever, not possible, is not a selectable answer. So going by what Day is hypothesizing in chat and going by the movie Cube... One person is going to get it. Oh, all right, we did it. You are given the following information about the number of possible tic-tac-toe games. The number of games that end on N moves is M, N. The number of games that end in draws is D. How many distinct tic-tac-toe games are there? Okay, hang on. Where's my drink? Oh, it's right here. It's in front of me. The number of games that end on N moves is M. Okay, so M, M. M is the, M is the rep. Okay, D is always going to be for draws. D is, D is that. So M. What does M mean again? What this tells me is that this is, there's 23 possible outcomes in Tic-Tac-Toe where there's only five moves made, which is X, and then O plays, and then X plays, and then O plays, and X wins. The person who goes first wins. And then there's also five situations that can play out in six moves, and one that plays out in seven? That doesn't seem right. I want to say the answer is going to be the one that includes... I'm not going to hit submit. I want to say it's this one, because this is D. D... You mentioned D. And this is the only answer that uh, that includes D. None of these seem correct to me because, like this one, okay, this is this is games that end in five moves, which is possible. But this only has f like okay, a game of tic tac toe can end in five, six, seven, eight, or nine moves. Nine being D, so five, six, seven, or eight. This one is just nine factorial. This is nine factorial, but it, it's minus the outcomes that only include five, six, or seven moves. Not eight. Eight's not represented here. This one is six, seven, eight, and nine. Which I guess is just a different way of... Well... No, M9 is different than D. Because M9 is a game that ends in nine moves where somebody wins. And D is a game that ends in nine moves where nobody wins. But the factorial thing addresses the permutations. 
but this cannot be correct because this doesn't take this just nine factorial by itself only takes into account the number of different ways you can completely fill up the entire board i think that doesn't take into account the games that end with less than nine moves so i'm going back down to the one that includes d <laughs> because logically <laughs> thinking probabilistically they talk about d in the question and yet this is the only answer that includes d so <laughs> motherfucker oh well next one. Oh, well okay that's doable what is the smallest positive integer m such that this inequality holds true for all a b c d satisfying a b c d okay what are these symbols right here can we get a can we get a can we get a fucking wiki on what e and then the fucking letter r in the same style as when people put aesthetic in their twitter profiles like what f fucking font is this? So what is the? They're giving us six six twenty two oh eight as the example. Let's just kick it up a notch and say six twenty two oh nine. I don't want to hit discuss solutions. Uh, that's just gonna open up like a, oh okay oh my god. Let's go to the, let's go to the last problem of the, problem of the week. X one X two and X three are chosen randomly and independently on the interval. 0 to pi and let function of x equals sine of x what is the average area of the triangle created with the three vertices below to two significant figures <laughs> I don't know I'm gonna go with three and since you said two significant digits I'm gonna go with zero zero it's gonna be three on the dot on the dot three on the dot no? Okay, let's just... You said pi. Let's try 3.14. No? Okay, let's do 3.14159265358979263. That's as far as I can go. Oh, it's 0.67? Okay, well, that was going to be my next answer. Okay, so, uh, I think we got... Okay, basic, out of the park. Basic, this appears to be, I, I'm seeing a pattern develop here. Basic doesn't really hit you with a lot of math. Basic is like, hey, are you paying attention? So we knocked that out of the park. Intermediate, we got two of them right. I think on this one, we, it says not done because it just did an update. But I think we also got two of the advanced problems correct. And that's, that's all we got. That's the problems of the week. So now...